because we taking the instructions that Paul was given here we taking them literal because in the midst of all of this false doctrine that's what you need to do to show people the truth you need to prove it to them but now so they don't just take somebody's word but now go to uh, 2 Corinthians 6 2 Corinthians 6 But the moral of the story is, as a whole, things are messed up. This is what this is letting you know. The vineyard is messed up. Many pastors and preachers and reverends and doctors and have destroyed the vineyard. Some of them even call themselves father. But they didn't destroy the vineyard. Second Corinthians 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. So you can't be looking at the overall situation in the world thinking it's all good. Thinking the first church you go to, go to is going to be the right one. You can't look at it that way in a polluted vineyard. This is, why, this is why Paul wrote this here, 6 and 17. Go ahead. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. See, that's what you have to do in this polluted world. You can't be among the mainstream. If you're going to serve the Lord, the Lord is not in the vineyard no more. Even Jesus they cast out of the vineyard. Paul just told you even later on after his time, even down to our times, they wouldn't endure sound. He said, the time come, they won't endure sound. Doc, they're going to have these teachers. They're going to heap to themselves. And they won't endure the truth. They're going to be turned unto fables. So that's total pollution. So you can't deal with that thinking you know the Lord. That's why a lot of people are going to be in for a rude awakening when Jesus do come back. You can't deal with it like that. So Paul said here, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. In other words, he said, look, you can't deal with it in the vineyard. Go ahead, verse 18. And will be a father unto you, uh -huh. and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. But the, the commandment was, he said, come out from among them. Let's see if he really mean that. Go to uh, Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. See, that's why many people, when I was young, I started looking for the Lord. I went straight to church that my people went to, a Baptist church, and I didn't find the Lord nowhere in the place. And I really wanted to know about the Lord. I really went there. I didn't go there looking to get no lie. And I assumed I was going to get it. I said, they've been going to church all this time. They got to know something about the Lord. And I realized, I said, these people don't know nothing. I don't know nothing, but I know they don't know nothing. I went back to the streets. Because what I saw them doing, now I knew certain things I was doing was wrong, right? Do you know they was enticing me to do it in the church? And first I almost liked it. I said, hey, this is all right. This ain't, you mean I can keep doing this stuff? I said, boy, don't fool yourself. You might as well go back where you was at. They doing the same thing. Nobody preaching against it or nothing. Doing the same stuff I was doing when I was running around in the streets. So I went there genuinely looking for the Lord, and I didn't find the Lord because I went along with the status quo. But for you to truly find the Lord, you got to realize, first of all, the vineyard is polluted. The vineyard produced bad grapes, all these false pastors. So you got to be looking for something pretty much on the outside. Notice what he said here in Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Hebrews 13 and verse 9. Hebrews 13 and 9. Go ahead. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, uh -huh. not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. See, now he said you can't be dealing with all kind of strange doctrines. You got to deal with the word of God uncut. You can't be dealing with divers. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. Therefore, you got to know what you're dealing with when you come to the Lord. You got to get his doctrine. He says, the good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that which have been occupied there. Just like I told you when I went to the church. Hey, they didn't have the doctrine of the Lord. They didn't have, they hadn't been profited. The stuff they was dealing with hadn't profited them because they didn't know nothing about the Lord. 
So I realized that much, and I didn't really have a clue, but I knew something wasn't right with that. But go ahead, verse uh, 14. For we, for, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. I'm sorry, we skipped it. I made a mistake and had you skip. Back up to verse uh, 10. My fault. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. Uh huh. Verse 11. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Okay, so now, see, he letting you know that you can't deal with what everybody else is dealing with. Even though everybody else is doing it. Just because it's popular don't mean it's from God. So that's why he start off at verse 9. Don't be cared about with these strange doctrines that these people are dealing with. It don't matter how many people are doing it. They haven't been, they haven't been profited by dealing with this church that they're going to. They haven't learned nothing about the Lord. When you talk to them, they don't have a clue. They don't even know what day is the Sabbath day. They don't even know how to stop sinning or what sin is. They don't know that. They don't know that Jesus didn't die on Friday and, ride and rose on Easter Sunday. See, you don't, so you don't, ain't no need to deal with that. So this is what he's letting you know, which have not profited them which have been occupied therein. And then verse 10, he said, we have an altar where they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. So now he's letting you know that, look, if you're going to come to the Lord under these circumstances, you ain't going to find them in the usual place you think. This is what he's trying to tell you. Read verse 11 again. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. See, he used this sacrifice thing to show you. He said even the ones, just because they go into church, that don't mean they got it. Just because they go into church every Sunday, that don't mean they got it. Because even he, he gave you a nod. He said even the priest, in the old days, hey, they didn't eat other, they didn't eat other sacrifice because it was burned somewhere else. It was burned without the camp, right? Pay attention that he said it was burned without the camp. Go ahead, verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffer without the gate. See, so Jesus himself, he didn't suffer inside the city as we saw earlier. They cast him out of the vineyard, right? So he ended up suffering without the gate. So he's saying all of this to let you know, look, if you truly want to get the Lord and get away from all these strange doctrines, you can't go with the status quo. You can't go with what's customary in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. You got to go outside the vineyard. That's where the Lord is. Did it, isn't that where they crucified Jesus at? Purposely, he told you they cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. Then we read another scripture that say where he was crucified was nigh unto the city, but it wasn't inside. So he let you know right here, verse 12, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. He suffered without the gate. So where are we going to find Jesus at? In the vineyard in all these churches? No, we're going to find him outside. Where they go, when, you go, when you go to that church, they're going to say, you in a cult. Hmm. You didn't lost your mind. What's wrong with you? Why? Because you didn't went outside the vineyard now. You won't go along with the pollution in it. Where Jesus at? Verse 13. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. He said, but yeah, that's what you do. Let us go forth unto him. Where at? On the outside of the camp, right? Without the camp. And bear, what do you mean bearing his reproach? Well, look, they kicked him out and killed him. That's some reproach, isn't it? So don't think you're going to get treated nice. Hmm. If you're getting treated too nice in the vineyard, you serving the wrong God. You ain't going to get treated nice. No, you got to go ahead, put your head down, go on outside with Jesus. They're going to be kicking you on the way out. You got to go ahead. That's what he means. Let's go forth unto him outside the camp, bearing his reproach, because they're going to be kicking you out there. Get on out there. You, you in a coat. They call you a devil and everything. Yep. But... So you bearing his reproach, right? That's what, read it again, verse 13. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. See, we bearing his reproach. We gonna be reproached just like he was. But we gonna, we love him enough to go out there where he got kicked out at. He not on the inside. But let's show you an example of that. Read 